Many G-protein-coupled receptors have a large extracellular ligand-binding domain. When an appropriate protein ligand binds to this domain, the receptor undergoes a conformational change that is transmitted to its cytosolic regions, which now activate a trimeric GTP binding protein, or G-protein for short. As the name implies, a trimeric G-protein is composed of three protein subunits called alpha, beta, and gamma. Both the alpha and gamma subunits have covalently attached lipid tails that help anchor the G-protein in the plasma membrane. In the absence of a signal, the alpha subunit has a GDP bound, and the G protein is inactive. In some cases, the inactive G protein is associated with the inactive receptor, while in other cases, as shown here, it only binds after the receptor is activated. In either case, an activated receptor induces a conformational change in the alpha subunit, causing the GDP to dissociate. GTP, which is abundant in the cytosol, can now readily bind in place of the GDP. GTP binding causes a further conformational change in the G protein, activating both the alpha subunit and beta-gamma complex. In some cases, as shown here, the activated alpha subunit dissociates from the activated beta-gamma complex, whereas in other cases, the two activated components stay together. In either case, both of the activated components can now regulate the activity of target proteins in the plasma membrane, as shown here for a GTP-bound alpha subunit. The activated target proteins then relay the signal to other components in the signaling cascade. Eventually, the alpha subunit hydrolyzes its bound GTP to GDP, which inactivates the subunit. This step is often accelerated by the binding of another protein, called a regulator of G-protein signaling, or RGS. The inactivated GDP-bound alpha subunit now reforms an inactive G-protein with a beta-gamma complex, turning off other downstream events. As long as the signaling receptor remains stimulated, it can continue to activate G-proteins. Upon prolonged stimulation, however, the receptors eventually inactivate, even if their activating ligands remain bound. In this case, a receptor kinase phosphorylates the cytosolic portions of the activated receptor. Once a receptor has been phosphorylated in this way, it binds with high affinity to an arrestin protein, which inactivates the receptor by preventing its interaction with G proteins. Arrestins also act as adapter proteins and recruit the phosphorylated receptors to clathrin-coated pits from where the receptors are endocytosed and afterwards, they can either be degraded in lysosomes or activate new signaling pathways.